Um, introductions and prior knowledge. So me, I say Stuart Yates. Um, I've been an accountant now for 40 odd years. Um, I'm a fellow of my institute. I've done lots of accounting stuff over the years. I've now retired and I want to give back to you students who have come on this accounting course. Um, so if you can just quickly go around the room, if you say who you are, just your name, and whether you've had any prior knowledge of accounting concepts, please. My name's Keith Mantle, no, uh, no experience at all. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, so. Mary Roberts. Um, yes, I did do accounting as part of my degree, but I have no idea what that was about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tanisha, I know by default because my husband's an yeah. accountant. <laughs> uh, my name's Faye, and I've bits and bobs, but. Okay. Okay. Well, the, the, and what I'm covering today is, is company accounts. So you, you may have your own, you may be a sole trader. Yeah. But this isn't sole trader accounting because mm -hmm. sole trader is normally based on cash. Mm -hmm. And this is showing the difference between cash and expenditure, which is the way we produce our company accounts. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'll try and get the right this time. So the learning objectives are to demonstrate. I should say an understanding of the difference between cash and expenditure in the company account, what is an accrual, an example of how we calculate and process accruals, and then a worked example, and I'll be testing your learning in that, in that, that, uh, that, that worked example. So, first of all, so it's a bit wordy, but it needs to be, so yeah. <laughs> um, cash is a measure of payments made from the bank account in a company. So it's the normal things, you know, we buy materials in a company, you buy equipment, all sorts of things. Um, expenditure is a measure of the goods and services that you receive and use in a certain time period. Whether you've paid for it, whether you've not, it, it's, that's the expenditure that you record in the account. Um, an, an example above, the materials may be purchased from a supplier and you use them when you get them. You might not pay for them for 30 days, as per the contract terms. Um, and then the expenditure statement is the record of the expenditure in the company account. So if we think about it, uh, sorry. OK. So the, the concept of accruals is we have to translate cash into expenditure. So the, the accrual value is calculated, and I'll sell it the crawls in a minute. It's 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 posted then as a as a, an entry in the books of the account. So it gets you from cash to the expenditure, what you've actually used those goods on in that time frame. So a positive accrual is for when you've actually had the goods and not paid for them yet. A negative accrual is where you may have paid for the goods already but not had them. And if you think about it in everyday living. So a positive accrual is, as, as a reminder, goods received that was not paid for. So we all use our credit card to purchase things from Amazon. <laughs> and we get those goods normally the next day or the same day sometimes. It's two hours. Um, but an example there, we've, we've, we've purchased £500 worth of stuff in the month of September. But we don't pay the bill until October. So... In, in terms of setting the, the of calculating the expenditure, that's five hundred pounds. So you need to put because we haven't actually paid anything yet. You have to accrue for five hundred pounds. Okay. The, the opposite side, if you paid a deposit of eight hundred pounds for a suite which is being delivered next month, you've not got the goods yet, but you've made the payment. So. The value of the, the accrual in September is minus £800 because you've paid the money, so you've got to take £800 out of the cash to get to the goods you receive, which is zero. Okay? I'll, it, there'll be an example in a second. Right, okay. So the, the worked example is that um, we're going to build a new warehouse. And the supplier, the, the contract terms are that they will invoice us and we will pay 
200,000 pounds a month. And it'll take five months to build, so the cost of the warehouse is a million pounds. Mm. Okay? That work, the, the, the warehouse will be built. The project manager in our company will be managing that project, be, the, the warehouse being built, and he will decide at the end of each month how much work has been completed on that. And he'll then advise that to the finance team. And we will have, the finance team will then need to calculate the value of the accrual to put into the books to get to the value of work completed. Because the £200,000 a month that we paid, doesn't work on that screen, great. <laughs> um, that will be, we'll pay it, it'll go into the books because it'll have gone out of the bank account. But it won't necessarily be the value of work completed, so it won't necessarily be the expenditure. So, we've got here, I can't use this, the £200,000 a month that we've paid, so that's the cash, and the work completed is the expenditure. So 240,000 in month one, 100, 260, 240, 160, that's the million pound again. So at the end of it, the end of the project, it, they, both figures are the same, because they would be, because the, the, the warehouse has been built and it costs a million pounds. The way to calculate the accrual then, the way to get from cash to expenditure, first, first thing we do is to calculate the cumulative value of each. The cumulative value of cash, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and then the cumulative value here every month gets to a million pounds again. So remember that the, the, the value of the accrual gets us from here to here. So this is what we need to record in the books of the account. This is the adjustment we make to get to it. So that's appeared in the books, but that's what we need to record as expenditure. So what's the value that goes in here to get us from here to here? So 200,000 to 240,000. So what, what's the amount that appears in the April box? Correct. Okay. The next month... We've paid 400,000, but the work that's been done is only 340,000. So what's the value in May? Minus, minus. Minus. 70, is it? No, 40. No, it's, it's, it's 400,000, it's 340, or 60,000. So is it 60, plus, minus? No, it's a minus. What do we think? What does, no. what, what does the group think? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's going to be minus 40. 340. Yeah. Minus 60. Does everyone agree with minus 60? I don't know. It's minus. Because we're saying that if we've paid out, not in this one, we've, we've, the, work, yeah. the work that's been done it's is more than the payout. It's yeah. a minus. So it's minus 60. Does everyone get that? So it's, it's, in effect, it's the difference between these two numbers, basically, in each, in each place. So we've paid 400,000, but there's only 340,000 pounds worth of work that's been done. Yeah. So to get... It's not 60 again. It's 60 plus uh, 40. No, it's, no. It, no it's two, we've got the cumulative figures. Okay. So... You have to do it for each month. For yes. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. So the answer is minus 60K. 60 minus 60,000, sorry. I was talking K. So does everyone get that? Does everyone get the, the way I've got to it? Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Right, next month, month of June, we've paid out 600,000 and there's 600,000 pounds worth of work been done. So what's the entry for the accrual there? Zero. Zero. Correct. Following month, we've paid 800,000, there's 850,000 pounds worth of work that's been done. Not you this time, sorry. <laughs> Can someone else? Minus 50. Why minus 50? Um, because we've got cash for 800. Yeah. And we spent 
No, you've got cash, you've spent 800,000. Yes. The work that's done is 850,000. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, plus, plus 50,000. Yeah? You don't agree? <laughs> <laughs> Correct, 50,000. <laughs> and then in August, obviously we're at the end of the project now, so the two figures equate and there's no, there's no value to put in. So I say what you're doing is you're getting from cash, which is, it, it, that gets recorded in the books because it's, you know, it's gone out of the bank account. But what we need to record is the actual expenditure. The work completed is the expenditure. That's what goes in the, the book of account. For the company. So when, when they say that the company's had expenditure of whatever it is, you know, the company I work for, we spend five billion pounds a year on the road network. So, and that's, you know, cash can be whatever, but the, what we actually, the expenditure we spend, the expenditure on the road, not the cash, is what we need to account for in the books. So, so basically, you, there was a budget of one million. Yes. Yeah, so there's a budget of one million. And then an agreement was put in place to pay off that one million. Yes. So every month, you can just, the work or the value of the work might be different as long as the agreement is still in place yes. for the work to be completed and I end up paying yes. one million. Yeah, I mean, you know, in most projects, the figures go up and down and all over the place. Yeah. You know, they yeah. might like, overspend, underspend, whatever. But so this is an example to, to, to demonstrate the way you get from the cash to the expenditure by this adjustment. Okay? So, um, a brief recap. Uh, the learning objectives were to demonstrate an understanding of the difference between cash and expenditure. Yep. So do people recognise that? Yeah. Okay? Um, what is an accrual? That's the adjustment we make to get from the two. Um, example of how we calculate and process accruals, being one less the other. And then we had a worked example and I tested your learning. And I think between us all, we got the right answers, eventually. But it was the last one we all got together, so. Why do we need to know what the accrual is as we go along? It's at the end of the project. Uh, that's, that's because monthly, so each month we have to actually put together a set of accounts. Sorry. So every, every month, right. you know, we have a, a financial statement at the end of every single month. Oh. It's not just the year end, unfortunately. It's every single month. So you have to work out the work completed compared to what the cash has been paid, the invoices, the whole nine yards you have to do every single month. So, you know, and some of these projects, you know, if you've got a big project, it can go on for years. Mm. So, and the, uh, the, 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 um, the discipline of doing it every month means that then it's, it becomes routine and it's, it's then part of the process that everyone knows they have to do. Is you know? it part of the process though or what's the reason behind doing it? Because I'm just thinking if you've set yourself a goal, I understand doing it every month and mm. routinely as you said, but the importance of it would be to make sure that we're not underspending or overspending on both in it. So I'm yeah. not paying for something that I'm not getting the services yes. for. Yes, true. So when I get to whatever end that project is, and then I see that I paid the one million, but the value of the work. Mm. Yes, that's not, well. That's a, that's a different concept that okay. we will maybe cover next week. Okay. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the next week I need to come. The, 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 the reason this is done in a set way, and there are, there are accounting standards which we'll cover next month okay. as to how these things are put in place. And the book's about this thick, you know, on accounting standards. I'm convinced about why we need them every month. Well, no, we no, need no. Them dates. No, but we, I was just, I was, yeah, we need, we need them every month because at certain points in, in the year, for instance, all, all businesses, all commercial companies will produce a set of accounts at the year end. Mm -hmm. So if the year end happens to be here, end of June, some, some companies have a year end account yeah. at the end of June. Some have end of 
March, but I've only got one here, then June. Some have end. Yeah. And it's so that, so if, if the year end happened to be the end of June, then you'd have to, actually, okay, there's, a, there's a zero in there, but okay. <laughs> that would have to be recorded as the expenditure. Okay, and I just wondered why they yeah. needed one every month if, you know, but year end. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, al but also, not, not, not just that though. Not, <laughs> Some, some companies have year ends, but also some companies produce um, profit statements on a regular basis. Okay. And that's when, again, when the expenditure needs to be accounted for in the correct yeah, way. Sure. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah, okay. We should go yeah. well. Last time month, don't we need to spend, I don't know, 500 pounds that we didn't account for or something like that. So we went wrong with extra care or something. Yes. And you need to look at these little things because yes. you're still on track for the budget at the end of the year. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. well, so the actual, the, the the um, difference between a, a forecast and a budget mm -hmm. is a whole different yeah. process, which I was thinking about covering today, but I, mm -hmm. that, this is the one that, that's won out. So. Mm -hmm. so that's what we've gone through. And I was going to ask that, but everyone's had, but people have been asking questions, which is good. I, I'd rather you ask as you go along, Joanne, because, you know, the, it, particularly on the, the actual the work example, we need to each understand at the same level. Good job. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And